Hello and welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Red Hat Summit 2023 as well, Ansible Fest as well bundled in. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We've got a great panel here. We're going to unpack a customer who's transforming in real time, and we get the leaders of Red Hat and IBM here. We've got Reddy Goodla, who's the Vice President of Engineering at Elevance Health, formerly Anthem. John Granger, Senior Vice President of IBM Consulting. Had a busy day on conference, doing a talk to the analysts and the investors. Of course, Matt Hicks, President and CEO. But this is the highlight. <laughs> this is a lot easier. <laughs> Let me see the numbers. Um, Matt, great to see you again. John, thanks Good for coming you. on, ending yeah. your day sure. with us. Yeah, and pleasure. Appreciate you sharing your story here. Glad to be here. So the first question, already is transformation is, sounds easy. What's your biggest pain point that you're working through right now? What successes have you had so far, and what's ahead of you? Um, so at Elevance Health, we started our journey to build good digital experiences many years ago, and um, as we went through this journey, uh, we made significant investments in the last eight years, and very happy with some of the progress we made. But when we looked at uh, digital experiences, uh, as we are transforming the digital experience, the big challenge we faced is something to do with our uh, core systems. We needed to modernize, we needed to re recognize the need uh, to digitize our core, modernize our, uh, our core applications. And uh, so that's to me is the, is the biggest pain point, like how do we have a strategy uh, that'll help us give better digital experiences, so. John, this is a question for you. What, what's the IBM Consulting Red Hat partnership? These are big problems, they're business transformations, not just technology, you got business outcomes, every ap application is driving the companies. What are some of the things you're working on with, with Red Hat? Yeah, so look, I mean, let's start with um, clients. You know, I'm, uh, it, you know, when you think about the, you know, the clients that, that IBM has and, and how you, you know, what you would see them to have in common, I'd call it mission critical operations, you know, whether it's FS, telco, you know, government, healthcare. And I think what we found in, in the last, you know, two or three years is, is really that, you know, for those clients, you know, uh, uh, in when they look at cloud, I mean, a simple hop to the public cloud just isn't going to work for them, you know, for reasons of, cost, you know, data security, the complexity of the mission critical, you know, applications that they run, they really need to look for something, uh, you know, that's going to help them uh, spread their estate across traditional IT, uh, on-prem on environments, private cloud, multiple public cloud. And if they do that, and if they can take advantage of a hybrid cloud architecture, then you know, we can see very significant benefits, like two and a half times more value from that hybrid cloud architecture than you know, just using a simple public cloud. And so obviously Red Hat you know, brings all of that together. You know, I mean, you know, with the Red Hat stack, that you know, combination of Kubernetes and uh, uh, containers uh, and Linux, you know, they, they are able you know, to bring that fabric that enables you to build your applications once, deploy them anywhere. Yes. Uh, and, and most importantly, I think, and, and this is the real thing for me, is to actually skill your people once in this single hybrid cloud yeah. architecture and then use them anywhere so you avoid the Frankenstein's monster of all the <laughs> individual <laughs> silos, yeah? yeah? Um, and then to innovate anywhere with anyone's technology. The really exciting thing is you can use anybody's cloud you know, once you've got this you know, Red Hat architecture. So, so what we do, you know, what we've done is we saw that opportunity. We built this big Red Hat practice, as Matt well knows. Mm -hmm. And we've got some great client examples, Delta, you know, Discover, US Department of Education, where you know, we've you know, been able to really help our clients transform because we've had such a strong partnership with them. You guys have a great practice. I, we've covered a lot on Silicon Angle. Man, yeah. let's build on the hybrid cloud thing. Mm -hmm. Ready's got, he wants to move faster, have better apps, better user experience on digital. Yeah. Doing it in the open, and with the cloud, API taught us to decouple. Yeah. You've got now multi-party <laughs> integrations. Yeah. You can get best of breeds and stitch the platform together and with open source. Take us through your vision on how to make this happen, because this is a huge accelerant, and with yep. AI, with a tailwind, it's a great opportunity. It, it really is, to John's point, I think, being able to run anywhere you need, whether that's use the data centers you have today, um, expand into public cloud, leverage edge, that's powerful. And then you have this workload accelerant of, uh, well, I want to use AI, and I'm going to train in my data center public cloud, I'm going to deploy at the edge. The ability for our architecture to fit those use cases, I think is, is great. But then there's also this shift, if I look at consulting, where you can have the desire for new technologies, 
but then do you have the skill sets to accelerate yeah. um, your use and use best practices? I started life as a consultant, <laughs> and in those days, it was actually at IBM, I was doing Linux deployments. For the same, same reasons we're talking about today, I had the expertise, I could jumpstart customers on their Linux journey. I think the same thing plays out today of using that expertise to jumpstart you in open hybrid cloud. By the way, I just tweeted that before you came on that you were starting your career in IT and now the CEO of Red Hat, so <laughs> congratulations, <laughs> great, you got the chops, and being a technical leader is a great thing, so you got to make these architectural decisions. Ready, this is an architectural game now, right? This, you're talking about distributed computing, mm -hmm. on-premise, cloud, edge, stitching together, middleware, there's all kinds of new things happening. How do you pick the right partner? Because now, you don't want to slow down. At the same time, you want to go fast, but you, don't want, you want options. Absolutely. Take See, if you look at any large uh, transformation, and even large, any transformation journey, you need to start off knowing your current state, you need to know where you want to get, what kind of a technologies, what kind of a skill set, what do you need to make it happen. And uh, it's important to find the technology partners who can give and build the ecosystem around it to help support the transformation journey. And uh, that's when, uh, uh, for example, in our situations, when we wanted to rewrite uh, some of our mainframe applications which were built uh, many decades ago, which evolved over a period of time, one of the first things we needed is a good baseline of our current state, good baseline of our requirements. And that requires us to build a very robust reverse engineering practice. And uh, a reverse engineering means you need somebody who has a good uh, mainframe Technical knowledge, <laughs> as well as uh, the, open, the modern technologies. And so we worked with many technology partners trying to, and then the process we learned but working with IBM Consulting in, during the process, we figured out like um, we can automate. So we have now a somewhat of a, a f somewhat semi or fully automated way of extracting business rules out of COBOL code, and now we have a good baseline to start with for our developers and analysts. I guess my follow-up question would be real quick: How do you tend? You must get called on all the time. People knock on you, hey, pitching you stuff. Mm -hmm. How do you tell the players from the pretenders when you do the evaluation? Oh, I would say, actually that's a good question. So, uh, we do, so when we started this journey, especially in this case of reverse engineering, when we asked a lot of vendor partners did come up, people who have been working with us for many times, they did come up and said, okay, here are the, so, some solutions, some products, but deep down as the details are coming out, it was very evident, very evident that there are some, some vendors who have the expertise, they are the technology partners who bring the expertise, and there are some who don't have it. So, so I guess, yes, it's, it's actually in some cases, you, you, you do try around with a few vendors, and then you finally yeah. land into the one that really has the expertise. But it's people in the end, isn't it? I mean, don't you, I mean, I, you know, when you're you know, making that selection around expertise, it's really you know, when the people stand in front of you and you can tell you know, from how they pitch and their credentials. I mean, yeah. in the end, I think, yeah. you know, in the technology business, we can get uh, you know, seduced a little bit by all the whizzy <laughs> stuff, but in the end, you know, if you've got somebody who really you can see has got that deep yeah. expertise and that comes over, as well as the backup and the references, then you know, I, I think that's you know normally uh, what you know yeah. what wins for us anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and then the experience matters, right? Yeah. We do know there's a track record, yeah. there's references. Yeah, we did run across some small vendors, some Silicon Valley vendors, which are yeah. great when they supported us, but then when it comes to scaling, depth, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. we didn't, we did have some challenges there. You know, yeah. results now are accelerated, so you can really, really put that out on the table and see it in action. I think that's yeah. a big piece. Yeah. Really appreciate you sharing that. Now, switching gears, John, I want to get back to this theme of the show: open collaboration. Yeah. How do you see that rendering itself with the client successes? How do you, what, how do you see that? How would you describe that? What is open collaboration? Well, look. I mean, I think I think open for us is um, you know is the recognition that you know no one company can have you know the monopoly of the technology solutions that they provide, and that's fundamental to today's IBM. I mean, one of the things that Arvin has changed is the whole you know sort of notion that you know that we need to collaborate you know with the ecosystem. We need to orchestrate. You know, we need to bring that together. And you know, we've done a lot of work on that uh, in IBM and in IBM Consulting. I mean, at the same time we were building up this Red Hat business that I talked to you about, we've also built a billion dollar AWS business and a billion dollar Azure business. But in terms of how that really instantiates itself, then you know, what we think is really important is 
um, you know, something we call garage, which is a way of working when we bring our clients together, either physically or yeah. virtually, you know, into an environment with um, our technology and our partner's technology, and then really spin up very quickly through co-creation, a minimum viable product that you can then build out and move quickly. And I think that's really the modern, you know, instantiation of how that open collaboration really works. And then, you know, and, and obviously then, you know, being prepared, you know, to work in a very um, collaborative and trusting way with your strategic partners and, 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 and ensuring that, you know, whether we're working, you know, with, uh, in, with Matt and his team or whether we're working with AWS or Azure or, 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 or SAP that we're really building those, you know, solutions in together. Yeah, yeah. you're building. I mean, you're on multiple yeah. clouds. I you covered your news at AWS yeah. at reInvent last yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. Um, and multi-cloud is on the horizon. I mean, this yeah. is hybrid is winning, or yeah. one, I should say one. Yeah, and I and I think uh, I, you know, I mean, you know, to to your point, that hybrid I think is going to spread out then into in, into the whole AI space because it's going to be multi-model on multi-cloud. I mean, that's you know where I think the future is going to be. What I would say too, I've I talked about the impact of global creativity with AI. I think when you take consultants, so they're technical, they know customers. They can influence an open source stack. Yeah. I sort of feel like that's what drew me to both of those careers early on. Yeah. That's a really powerful aspect yeah. of um, they're able to make products better in, yeah. uh, in part of that journey too. Yeah, yeah. You bring that up, and since I had a rant on my last podcast with Dave, we do a weekly podcast now. One of my rants was, we have a rant section. The word guardrails, because it's like the word of the week. <laughs> yeah. They're like, we're going to put guardrails down. It's a polite way of saying, we're going to drive hard, <laughs> and we may bounce around a little bit, but, yeah. we can, but we're going to stay in our lane, yeah. so to speak. For yeah. not, we don't get too regulated, we don't yeah. want to get pulled yeah. back. Yeah. It's, a, it's an offensive move with AI, I think totally the way to go, because we don't yet know what it is. And, and we said, if you regulated the web, it never would have exploded. Yeah. So yeah. I think this idea of letting AI run a little bit, mm -hmm needs guardrails, and I think this brings up, this conversation here reminds me of this relationship is, if you want to go fast, you got to have trusted partners. You have to have an ecosystem, yeah. open ecosystem for verifying software supply chain. I mean, a lot going on. Yeah. What, what's your reaction to that? No, I think it's critical. I, if, if you're looking at Ready's use case on this, if I, I'm going to be making core decisions that impact people's lives, you want to know how that stack mm -hmm. works. This is where I think, IBM's expertise and Red Hat's expertise are incredibly complementary. where mm -hmm. IBM's going to know the models, they're going to be able, whether it's indemnification of what models are built against, data, policies, governance, they're really strong there. We play in the swim lane of, we're going to help you move those to any environment fast. Yeah. Combining those for customers, I think is really powerful. Yeah. You yeah. get the trust aspect, but you don't lose out on innovations by trying to put up too many guardrails or not adopt until yeah. it's perfect. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we'll know it's perfect until we've put but it through the But that trust piece is so. going to be critical because yeah. we're talking about enterprise, yeah? Mm -hmm. and, I mean, yeah. I, I mean the, you know you know, with boards, I mean, the <laughs> thing that, that all boards are asking our clients now are, why haven't you done it? Yeah. You know, why can't you go faster? And then yeah. at the same time saying, but hang on a minute, don't do any of it because we're really worried about you know yeah. where our data is going to be and so on. So you've got to find that that you know that trusted you know that trusted partnership that's going to allow you as an enterprise to you know to yeah. um, you know to move forward john yeah. that's a great point that's why i like the guardrails in this context really yeah. because you want to have trust so think about rel right think about red hat originally mm -hmm. they took open source operating system and they made it enterprise grade and they supported it yeah. it's a very yeah. simple concept mm -hmm. now yeah. look good enough yeah. so now you got ai how do you get that same dynamic and i think ibm yeah. consulting I'm kind of riffing in real time here, but like with IBM Consulting and the Red Hat combo, you kind of get best of both worlds. You get full support and scale, mm. IBM Consulting track record but is But you've phenomenal. also got a brand that, that, you know, that has stood over, you know, over 100 years for having a really responsible you know, approach mm -hmm. to the introduction of new mm -hmm. technology, and I think you, know, you can trust yeah. IBM in that regard. Well, Ray, you got all the decision makers right here, so what's the ask <laughs> for IBM? Let's go, let's get that discount. He wants the price to come down. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Cube exactly. discount, let's go. Yeah, exactly. The he good gets discount. no commission. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all open, I'm just referral. <laughs> Pay it forward. Yeah. John, close us out with the vision of IBM Consulting. You guys had a, have had a great track record over the years. It's been well documented, world-class organization. You got Red Hat, this, you got the technologists, you got chops, you got open source yeah. booming, AI's tailwind. So, so look, I mean, I, I think, you know, 
we want to you know double down on on open collaboration as we've just been talking about i think you know what distinguishes us in ibm consulting is we're client first yeah with with a point of view so we're in no way tethered to ibm technology we built our red hat practice because it's great yeah. and it's brilliant and clients want it not because ibm bought it yeah and i think the second thing we want to do is really you know uh, deepen our partnership with my friend you know matt here uh, to the advantage of you know clients and and um, you know light ready and you know particularly in the space of yeah. generative AI because it's disruptive technology that you know that excites us all and so I think we really got to focus on and that. You're well positioned for the multi-cloud, super cloud, yeah. where you can stitch together environments yeah. and stacks and abstract yeah. that away yeah. with software. Yeah, OpenShift is doing really well. Yeah. OpenShift AI and you yeah. got yeah. Uh, Ansible. Yeah. Rocking here. Yeah. yeah. Awesome stuff. Well, thanks so much for coming on. Appreciate it. Congratulations. Thanks for sharing your story here on theCUBE. Really Glad appreciate to be here. it. Yeah. Thank All right. You. All right. That's uh, day, day one coming to an end. We've got our wrap up coming up. Stay with more CUBE coverage. Go to siliconangle.com. Stories are hitting there. Uh, check the Twitter hashtag RH Summit. Check it out. We'll be right back with our next guests. <laughs>